Welcome to the Ink Pulp Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Crystal. Today we have another free chapter, a sample, if you will, of an episode of Ink Pulp Instruction. Now, Ink Pulp Instruction is something I created with my partner, Alan, where we film, we create, we they're, I call them episodes. They're instructional art videos, but I call them episodes because there's so much more to them. This is a completely unique learning experience. I promise you that. Um, I crawl into the head of the artist while they're creating. and I, Well, I ask them questions as they're creating. I don't, I don't really crawl into their head. And it allows you the viewer to feel like you're inside their head seeing how they work seeing why they are doing what they're doing understanding why they use certain tools why they make certain marks how they approach certain things it's a one of a kind learning experience and it doesn't just focus on the art but it focuses on the artist so i've got a bunch of these out now right now as you're watching this I've got uh, five episodes out six and seven coming very shortly after this podcast gets released and then in 2022 we'll be releasing another 10 every month starting in February so today's sample chapter is from an episode we shot with Tommy Lee Edwards Tommy's a good friend Tommy's also um, one of the most amazing artists I've, I've ever come to know. And he's arguably one of the most amazing artists in the world when it comes to comics and, and visual development. So it was exciting to get this episode. Um, and I'm really happy with it. I mean, this is, this is where we started. I know I'm releasing this as episode five, but if memory serves, this was the second one we shot. So uh, check it out, enjoy this little snippet, this free preview, and then in the description of this podcast episode, you'll see a link for it. And if you click that link, you'll see the five episodes that are out now. Episode one with me, episode two with Eric Kennedy, episode three with Jim Mahfoud, episode four with Tommy Lee Edwards, episode five with Jeff DeCal. So that's what's out now. Six and seven are two episodes I'm putting out. I'm putting out one on my painting technique. Episode one is um, more of an instructional theory on how to ink with line. And this one, episode six, will be my painting technique that I'll walk you through the whole process. And I'm also releasing the first of these short, shorter form videos. So the episodes are like four hours long. And at, at a, about 100 bucks an episode, you're getting your money's worth. So I'm also releasing some smaller episodes that are, are more um, laser focused to get in, get out, get you some information quick. Um, and those are going to be obviously at a different price point. So next year, look for full episodes and shorter episodes with our guests as well. Um, so please enjoy this. If you click the link to get to inkpulpinstruction.com, you will see uh, there's an area to join f my newsletter. And in doing so, you'll get a free lesson emailed to you immediately. And um, check out the episodes that are there. Get yourself one. Give it a try. Uh, we are building. We're not going anywhere. This is the start. We're nearing the end of year one with this. And I've already planned out year two. And we're not stopping after that. We've put too much in this. I believe in this too strongly to, to just let it fade. So have faith. In Pulp Instruction is here to stay. Uh, enjoy this, this free sample and feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments. If you have any questions or anything, I check, I answer. I appreciate all of it. See you soon.
Peace. Um, all right, I think for now, yeah, there's a couple of these. You know, it actually kind of helps that, like, I've done work on this car, and actually sort of it helps to know, like, kind of, like, what I'm drawing a little bit. Yeah. So you you know the exact the exact car you're drawing you know that car yeah because you've worked on it uh huh see that's what I mean like you can just free them at any time yeah but I could do that with a brush exactly so exactly. but sometimes. Like, I might just do a line like that here or there, you know? And then it gives yeah, it Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. It gives you a structure. But yeah, it does also look very, I don't know. That looks kind of shitty to me. So Why let's just, I don't know, it looks, um, doesn't look like it would look in real life. Like it looks like a comic book drawing. <laughs> uh, it that's looks the, like. That's the Tommy I know. <laughs> I can't pretend to under like I understand what you're saying, but I can't pretend to think like that on my own because like I, I think your mind on an artistic level is working at a much deeper level than mine. So it takes a second to break in a new brush, you know. Yes. So right now it's hard. It's hard. It's stiff. So you don't put any water in your brush? No. Nah. Should so I? I you do what you do. I, I always put some water, but I'm I'm using Kalinsky hair brushes, so I want to make sure they're preserved. So I put water in it so that the ink won't dry in in it. Right, uh, right, right. And kill the brush. Maybe that's why my brushes don't last. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna have my reference here with me, and the reference really helps build my confidence, which I think I, I really need when I'm inking. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so. And you dip right in the bottle like that? Yeah. No ink well or nothing? No. All right, you're an anarchist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, what's an ink well? <laughs> like like a, a, a little. This uh, is the ink right here. That's not an ink well, that's the jar of ink. See for. Yeah. <laughs> Right. With a hole in it. <laughs> hmm. It's I'm learning stuff today. He's a savage. All right. Well. You're an animal. Um. <laughs> so also with this paper, you can see what I what I might do is some block off like an area. Oh, okay. Okay. That's part of the lift. The, that's lifting the car. Uh, that's what he's sitting on. Right. Um, that's uh, how I know Diaz is. Is um, we um, he lets me use his lift uh, and, and to work on my car, and then and then I ended up um, and then now um, I'm working on other people's cars for him, in in like trade, you know. So we trade help. With each other. So, how do you um, control, or I guess, do you control the amount of, like, how wet your brush is? By this, maybe? Okay, okay. Yeah. So. Because you do have areas where the, the brush is working drier and then somewhere it's working a little wetter. Yeah, yeah. So, so I know that, like, this is. Sometimes it's funny too because like when I'm doing certain comics, I usually color my own work. So lots of times um, I, I, I think in color. Right. So that might be, that might go towards your question of what about the color and the layouts? Does it mm -hmm. throw me off? Because, and sometimes I'll think about certain things thinking Oh, I'll, I can handle that value or tackle that separation of that thing in color later or something. Right. But on this, so I, like I'm right not going to color. You want so. that face of that. Um, the lift thing. Yeah, to be drier than the other. So you're drier. Yeah, than the brush. that's like a light side. Right. 
of the lift. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to have it be a little lighter. And, I mean, just your, one of the, your type of artist who, there's very little white left on the page when you're done. <laughs> Which I How, think is great. Well, it depends. I mean, such a, I mean yeah. <laughs> your range of value is rather extensive uh, for ink work. So you do have white areas, yeah, and they're very specifically chosen, but you have a wide range of grays, light grays, blacks, all from oh, yeah. how dry the brushes or how thin your marks are. Right. All right, done. <laughs> do you find, um, does the ink on this paper, this type of ink dry fairly fast? Yeah. Like you don't yeah. run the smearing very much, I'm assuming. Correct. Sometimes I do, but yeah, I might come in, I'm already finding some places where I might come in with white on this edge here. Right. Will you wait for the end to come in with the white? Usually. Okay. So, um, here I'm trying to indicate that this is shiny glass. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it's it's organic, but at the same time, sort of mechanical feeling because it's so perfect. Right. You know right. the glass. So what are you doing with the glass to help give it a reflective look? Is it just the shape of the black work you're doing? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe because it's like just smooth like that. Right. And also that it's going to be completely open now. That that all that. The white. Yeah. And I'm I'm just watching you ink. I'm realizing how much that uh, scrap paper is used as a tool in your process. Oh yeah. And you know just knowing your pages and like always seeing like where there's like a hard undefined edge where marks just stop. Oh yeah. I always wondered what that was and now I see it's that paper. That's I'm not as controlled as you are with that stuff. Right, I was I just can't. gonna ask you about that. Like you just made a long line and it was like it 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 whereas like I would have made it one smooth pull. Yeah. Um I think is right now I'm not totally confident or warmed up. Right, yeah. Is does it take you, like, do you have, like, in my mind when I'm inking, like, I kind of turn off the worry button and just give myself, like, a good five, ten minutes till I'm warmed up. And, like, when I start a piece, I won't go into anywhere important. Like, I do the opposite of you, where oh, yeah. when I'm starting a piece, my brush is going to be a lot wetter than I like it. So I look uh -huh. for big black areas where I can just sort of work the wetness out of the brush yeah, and get yeah. my hand moving. Uh -huh. And like, it'll, it'll take me a good five, 10 minutes till I'm like, all right, I'm ready to do that, that face. Right. But you jump right into that face. Yeah. And I'm noticing you, um, the bulk of your inking is is like a flick, flick type of mark making. Hmm. Like as opposed to like a straight or yeah, control. Like a, I'll do a very like I'll yeah exactly. Okay. I'm gonna get my reference so I can see it better. But even your rendering, like so your, I can figure your, out the car better. The rendering you do, the mark making is is all based on like a flick motion. Hmm. Oh, there you go. That's a nice long line. Yeah, it just depends. Uh... Yeah, I think when you get, when you've worked with a brush for a while and you're confident with it, there's like a real grace to watching it. Where I think people aren't see this and they're like, how do you do that? And I think that's one of the things I really wanted to capture and yeah. document. Um, there's a bunch of artists doing it. Because I think it is a bit of a spectator sport. Hmm. I've noticed at conventions. Do you notice at conventions that, um, like, the people who are inking, like, traditionally with a brush and stuff, 
tend to get a little more viewership on them. Like people are stuck. Oh yeah, yeah. Like oh, he's working magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hip-hop, life, 